Hey, this is Joe with Gray Bench Electronics. If you've been enjoying the two band build series, thank you, welcome back. If you're new here, welcome. It's a good time to join us because last episode we finished up the major metal work on the chassis using the knockout punches to make holes for the tube sockets. So we are now ready to actually start putting working electronics into the amplifier. I have hit the fast forward button a little bit because this part is boring, but I now have the terminal strips mounted. I have the tube sockets mounted. The filter chokes in there, the clamps for the can capacitor are mounted. Uh, so we are ready to actually start doing the fun stuff, which is putting in uh, the working electronics. So first step is putting in heater wiring. So let's get started on that. Uh, I have green and black 18 gauge stranded wire here. That's what I'm gonna use for my heaters. You're just gonna take the wire here right into the chuck, you can double them over if you need to, if you're, uh, if you're the jaws of your chuck can't grab onto your wire. I'm just holding onto this end and we're just gonna give it a spin here. You don't have to go super tight on this. That's as far as I'm gonna go, about like that. Uh, the reason we twist wires together is because there's a, a hum canceling feature as the magnetic fields interact with each other for twisted wires. A quick note on the terminal strips. I know I didn't show it here, but it's really as simple as just, uh, you can either do it in your layout very specifically, and then you'll know exactly where to put your terminal strips, or I just kind of leave it as a general placement of like, how many terminals do I need, approximately where are they gonna go? And then I just come in here, drill the holes, mount the terminal strips. There's really not much to it. It's not that interesting to watch. Um, you know, just make sure that you have enough lugs on your terminal strips where you mount them to do what you need to do. Um, so the, Heater wiring is gonna be coming out of the power transformer. We're gonna run it down here along the chassis up here to the first, uh, first tube socket. I'm gonna come off that tube socket here with heater wiring. Off of this tube socket, I'm gonna have my artificial center tap for my heaters. The heater wiring for this power transformer does not have a, a actual center tap, so we're gonna create an artificial one with 100 ohm resistors, and that'll just be coming off this tube socket. Uh, and then from this tube socket, we're gonna branch up here to the phase inverter and then branch out to V1 and branch out here to these two tubes. All right, so we got the heaters wired in for the uh, output tube sockets. So now we're gonna go up from the output tube socket here to the preamp tubes and wire the rest of those in. All right, so the heater wiring is done. Uh, that's one of my least favorite things to do inside an amplifier and I'm not super clean and nice with it. I just put the dang wires in. Um, so that's what we have. We have the 6.3 volt wiring going from output to sockets up here to the phase inverter, to the input gain stage and to the gain stages around the reverb. Uh, next step, um, we're going to build the amp from the bottom up. So. Next, I'm gonna put in the B plus wiring from the power supply out to the different uh, high voltage or B plus nodes throughout the amplifier. So we're gonna do that next.
All right, so I got the B-plus wiring done. That's the red wire here. Uh, I've got a few more wires to lay down on the chassis. I've got to connect the uh, bias supply to the grids for the output tubes. Have to uh, probably run some ground wires, at least on one side. And I'm gonna connect the input jack with some uh, shielded wire, some coaxial wire. Uh, yeah, so we'll do that next. I don't like doing wiring, so I'm getting pretty bored. So we're gonna skip ahead. I'm gonna start putting in these potentiometers. I have a ground bus wire here that we're going to install, boom. And we're gonna start wiring up some of that stuff. And then hopefully we're gonna to get to some actual components some resistors and capacitors. Uh, so yeah, let's get started on that. Okay, so just wanted to pause for a second here and we have a look at what we've done so far. We've got a decent amount of work done. Uh, it looks a little messy right now and that's partially because it is a little messy. That's just, you know, that's my style. But also there aren't zip ties on any of the cables yet. So that tends to tighten everything up and make it look a little neater. Uh, but just going over what we've done so far. So we have the output tubes basically completely wired now. I uh, got the coupling caps for the control grids on the output tubes. Got the one ohm current sense resistors on the cathodes, that'll help us to bias. Uh, we got the power supply basically completely done, uh, which is just a standard series resistance power supply with the exception of the uh, filter choke input as opposed to capacitor input. Uh, the reverb transformer is wired in. Uh, the I do have a reverb bypass switch uh, it works just the same way as your standard Fender reverb 
uh, bypass switch, a reverb switch. Uh, it's just a toggle switch instead of a foot switch. Uh, and it just works by shorting the that first gain stage after the uh, reverb tank. It just shorts the grid to ground. So when it's up, it's shorted the ground. No reverb signal passes through. When it's down, reverb signal can pass through to the rest of the uh, circuit. Uh, so we're going to keep chugging along here. I uh, still obviously have the uh, the input stages and different gain stages through the amp for the Novo sockets. Got to do the phase inverter and the recovery stage. Got to do the bias supply. And then we'll just keep moving on. Uh, I think I'm going to wire up actually the tone stack next just because I have to tuck stuff under the ground bus here. Uh, yeah, and then we'll be able to drop some transformers in. So let's keep going.